Hello beautiful people, this is a re-recording of the last video because in the last video the cursor was not very visible and that makes everything very difficult to understand. So welcome to this video, if you either rewatch it or if you watch it from for the first time and congratulations you found some content on YouTube that is of high quality and will really teach you something new <laughs> yes <coughs> because we are going to discuss about advanced basics of astrology they're basics because it is uh, very much needed for any calculation and it is a bit advanced because usually nobody knows about this so this is about how to calculate the ascendant and the different house points and why I'm doing this um, just a second Instagram because on my Instagram I got an, a comment uh, on this post here and there I was asked that she is um, Sagittarius ascendant um, and Jupiter is in Pisces so whether Jupiter is now in the third house or in the fourth house so this is the question and <coughs> it uh, seems a very simple question but there's quite a lot to it and that we are going to discuss in this video so stay tuned watch it until the end you will really learn a lot about astronomy slash astrology so actually for astrology this uh, real astrologer is supposed to know the sky of the heavens so I'm a lazy astrologer so I don't know them from real experience watching the sky but I can understand it from like a software like this this Stellarium so it is really nice to know how the whole mechanic of the sky is working and how to s how to understand the placements of the chart how they actually are present in the sky so that is very good it's actually a must for every astrologer to know that so therefore this is like an introduction to this type of topic so <coughs> first of all this is the chart um, here are the details it is in Spain northern Spain you can see here the location here it's like on the north northern coast of Spain near to France San Sebastian is the place um, these are the coordinates here 40 degree north and 1 degree west so and this is the condition of the sky at the time of birth it looks like this and in that place <coughs> so this is ascendant falls in Sagitt Sagittarius so Jupiter is in the fourth sign from there so if we are doing considering yogas like for instance this uh, um, Baba yogas I'm doing doing here on Instagram like the first Lord in the fourth that is like a Baba yoga then we consider the zodiacs and we count from that so that so this is the first house is Sagittarius um, if you're not familiar with the South Indian <coughs> way of depicting the chart, you can look at this graphic here. Um, here, Sagittarius is here in the corner. Then the Lord of Sagittarius is Jupiter. Here you can see Jupiter. And Jupiter goes to Pisces here. So this is means the first Lord is in the one two three fourth house so for this person um, this yoga would apply the first lord in the fourth Lagna lord in happiness one born is possessed with happiness from mother and father joined with many siblings and possessed of beautiful qualities if you want to know the interpretation of that follow me on instagram like this post and read the elaborate description all right <coughs> but so 
but there is more to it because the the lagna means the ascendant is not exactly a s um, a space of 30 degrees like a like a zodiac so this is Sagittarius this is 30 degrees of space in the sky if we see here um, we are turning on the we're turning on the we will find that here is Leo and take out this one Virgo oh, something is wrong here it's first 30th of January 1999 at 6 Eastern Horizon Hmm. Let me turn on the land again, the horizon line. Where is the sun? The moon is in Gemini. Is it true? Yeah, the moon is in Gemini. So where is the sun? Should be just under the horizon. Just a second. Um, the sun is in Capricorn. And something with the time is wrong. Um, oh yeah, the time zone is setting wrong. Is wrong set. Excuse me. This is um, actually this one. So now it's right. Okay, now we are now we are correct here. So, um, excuse me. Turn off this one. So the sun is just here below Sagittarius. Here is the Sagittarius as Capricorn. So we see Capricorn, Mercury, Sun and Capric and Mercury in Capricorn, Venus in Aquarius. Then Jupiter in Pisces. So we see here. Jupiter in Pisces, Venus in Aquarius, and Sun, Mercury in Capricorn. The ascendant goes to Sagittarius. So we see that the the, <coughs> the zodiacs they are thirty degrees of space, and that of if we have uh, the whole sky is three hundred sixty degrees, and then we divide it into twelve. That is very easy calculation. Three hundred sixty divided into 12 is 30 so each zodiac has 30 degrees so that means that Sagittarius is this 30 degrees of space and then we have uh, Scorpio here 30 degrees of space Libra 30 degrees of space Capricorn 30 degrees of space Aquarius 30 degrees of space and <coughs> they're kind of like containers and now the Lagna falls into Sagittarius but it doesn't it just not it's not a space like 30 degrees the the lagna means the ascendant is one specific point. Therefore, it is said that the ascendant falls exactly on 27 degrees Sagittarius. So how to how to calculate that? So that is for that we turn on the horizon here. If we're turning on these lines, these are the lines that are connected to the zenith. So this is the point exactly above the head, 90 degrees above us. And if we would turn out the earth and we turn bows, so this is the nadir, which is exactly below us. Then here this line is the horizon. And this line which goes through the zenith and the east point, that is the prime meridial. So in astrology, in the Vedic text, all the planetary positions or mostly most of the things are always calculated from this prime mer meridial. So this is a very important line. And <coughs> another one important line is the ecliptic. Um, for that I have to turn on the ecliptic. Just a second here. S so the ecliptic is where the planets are moving. So here the sun is always at zero degree of the ecliptic. 
then we have here 10 degrees plus 10 degrees minus of the ecliptic and all planets always move within this 9 plus and 9 minus degrees so sometimes Venus is a bit here a little bit there but it always moves along this ecliptic and th the zodiacs the star constellations they are positioned along the ecliptic and this is the ecliptic which is this line this is the line that is divided into 30 degrees spaces so like from here to here is like 30 degrees of oh these are actually 30 degrees here so this must be Sagittarius then there comes yeah more or less like this is Sagittarius 30 degrees Scorpio 30 degrees something like that <coughs> and um, now where the hori ho horizon line and this ecliptic they intersect so on this point that is the ascendant so we see here it intersects here in Sagittarius and that falls into 27 degrees Sagittarius oh, excuse me S so um, just that you can see better here so this line this line here this is the horizon if you turn on the you can see horizon is here hmm. and the ecliptic this is this line so where they intersect here that is the f that is the f the exact point of the ascendant <coughs> um, and now to so similarly this ascendant is one specific point on the ecliptic on the ecliptic it's one specific point so similarly all the other Mahava uh, all the other house points are also specific points they're not an undefined 30 degrees of space or a, or or um how you say a box of 30 degrees of space like the zodiacs but they're specific points and they fall in the zodiacs so if we see here in this uh, Jagannath Hora software I will put a link in the description you can download it there it's for free it's quite very useful software quite accurate so if you <coughs> see here there are different types of calculation methods for the house houses if you want to know more about that you can go to one website this is called um, astrologyvideos.com that are, is the website of Ernst Wilhelm is one of my teachers and uh, currently the website is down I don't know this is, it's just since, since today but there is one section under the courses which says about Shotish building blocks and that is free to access without subscription and there is a video called local space where these things are explained so what is the prime material prime meridial line this one the east point the north point the zenith and the horizon all these things are explained there um, <coughs> and there is another one video about the bava systems where mr wilhelm also ernst wilhelm is uh, explaining many different types of calculating bavas so he is using the um Campanos system here the software i can also choose uh, has quite many different types of systems so I'm also going with the company system and in this video we only discussed this if you want to know about other systems then you watch please watch the video of Ernst Wilhelm but here company system um, <coughs> all right so in this in this company system the second Bava point also the second house point falls into Aquarius it doesn't fall into Capricorn it falls so into 25 degrees Aquarius and then the third and the fourth point both to fall into Aquarius so how is that possible so this I'll show you here now so to calculate the Bava point we are taking this prime meridial and we, we are cutting this prime meridial prime meridial excuse me let me just get rid of this one this prime meridial into 12 sections so that gives us for each power point or each house point um, 30 degrees 
So these are 10, 20, 30 here. So if we go up, so that is in the sky which is above us at BERT, this is what we see in the sky at the time of BERT in the eastern horizon, above the horizon. So this 30 degree, this point here, that will be the twel 12th house point. If we go down, 1, 2, 3, until here, so 10, 20, 30 degrees down on the primary radial, so this will be the point for the second second bhava, second house. And now this has to be projected onto the ecliptic. So the ecliptic is this line here, where the sun is moving. This is this, this brown line here. This line is the ecliptic. You see Mars is here, along then Mercury, Sun, Venus, Jupiter, they're all, uh, all along this line. So we have to project this point here onto the ecliptic and that is done by connect by drawing a line to the north point so the north point is here and if you draw a line to this point here we'll intersect the ecliptic here so this is the point and it falls into Aquarius. Second house falls into 25 degrees Aquarius. So I cannot draw the line so nicely because they must, they might be a bit bent, like from here a little bit bent. So then it will cut here in the upper part of the Aquarius and goes there to the north point. So therefore the second house point falls into 25 degrees Aquarius. Now for the third, we have to go to 60 degrees. So here is 30, 40, 50, 60. And then this point we have to project on this on this one uh, <coughs> on the ecliptic by connecting um, this point to the uh, to the north making a line. So if we're making a line chick 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 uh, where is it? Oh, excuse me. So here is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And now we're drawing a line going, uh, going across here. And here we cut the ecliptic. So we kind of fall into areas. I mean, here it's not so clear because the lines are bent. So this program doesn't show this line which we need to co connect. But this is like the way it will something like this and here is areas it is cutting the line around here which brings which brings us close to Saturn and then we can see um, mm. Saturn is at 4 degrees areas that means this point here is 4 degrees areas and somehow this line from here goes goes here, it makes a bow, bow like that and cuts around here. So we can see the third house is at 4 degrees areas. So that means the Saturn is very much conjunct the fourth house. And Saturn is debilitated so it doesn't look good for, for the fourth house. However, um, Yeah, seventh, then the lord of the fourth house, Mars, situated in Libra, is also not too much nicely supported. Saturn is also getting beatings from Mars, so there will be quite some troubles with emotional welfare. Saturn is about uh, creating boundaries, healthy boundaries, so most probably this person will have difficulty to to make sh clear which is my space and let's often people walk over them. Anyway, this is just as a side note. So <coughs> we have here, now for the next, for the fo fourth power point, so three times, this is, um, here we go 30 degrees, this is the second, 60 degrees, that is the f uh, 
third power point. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the third power point connect conjunct to the setter, not the fourth. Yeah, so it's affecting mainly the endeavors, not able to and co continuously do endeavors, the needed endeavors. Anyway, <coughs> so we go, um, then we take, the next one is easy because the line is already drawn. It's the line from the nadir to the north point. So it's this line, this, this line here. It goes from this nine point, this point is the fourth Baba point that has to be projected on the ecliptic, this ecliptic, and it happens through this line, this north line. And the intersection is here. Saturn is at four degree areas, so this one, f this point falls into twenty three degrees areas. Okay. So this is the way. The same thing can be done. Um, then from the west point for the next four houses, we will not going to do that. Or also the same thing can be done. Um, with the 12th, 11th, 10th Bava above the horizon. So let's say um, we have the ecliptic here and where the sun intersects at the south point intersects. So this will be the 10th Bava cusp. Bava, no, the Bava point. That is here. This is the ecliptic. Mars is here, close to, them. and here this line. This is the line which is projecting the tenth house, which is the ni ninety degrees up, up directly up in the sky. It will be cut intersect here, and that is in Virgo, very close to Mars. So we can check. The tenth house, tenth cusp is twenty three Libra. Oh, sorry, it was not li li Virgo. It's Libra, and. Mars is at 8 degrees Libra. Oh, so maybe this is not so accurate, a little bit skewed. Yeah, seems the software is not perfectly accurate. But anyway, you get the point. So here will be the 10th Mava point. Um, Yeah, this is the this is the ecliptic, and here is the line. Yeah, this is the ecliptic, and here is the line that intersects. Okay. Okay, that's that's it for the explanation of the Bava points. So as I said, if we are considering yogas, like like this um, Bava yogas, I'm talking about on the Instagram. Then we consider Jupiter is the fourth, the first lord in the fourth house, and also in considering consideration of um, Raja Yogas, for ins instance, let's say seven, eight, nine. The ninth lord is Sun in the second house, conjunct with the seventh lord. So this gives a Raja Yoga in the second house. Seven lord conjunct to ninth lord will bring. Um, Dharma Raja Yoga, which is about very being very inspired. So this person will be very inspired to speak its truth, to take care of its family. Second house matters are very inspired. Will be this person will, will be very inspired for doing these things. <coughs> ten. It's also the ten Lord Mercury nine and ten Lord conjunct is very nice. Uh, let's see what the software says. Um, Sun Mercury. Huh? Raja Sambanda Raja Dharma Karma Yoga yeah, here this one 9 and 10 Lord conjunct and being conjunct to Ketu means Ketu will also be a ro yoga producer and being in opposition to Ra Rahu through the aspect Rahu also will become a ro yoga pr producer so this is a very inspired person in the dashas of Rahu Ketu also this yoga will manifest <coughs> okay, so um, that is what I wanted to say for the houses. So as I said, for yoga placements, we 
we consider we count the zodiacs, the rasis. But if we want to analyze the concrete effects on the houses, on the bhavas, then we have to consider we should consider these bhava points. I found this in very a more accurate to, uh, when we're using the bhava points. And that means in that case, if we want to consider the Lord of the third house and s for checking what is the condition of the third house, we have to consider Aries and the Lord of Aries is Mars. So that the Lord of the third house, so third house matters will be upheld by Mars. Fourth house matters also. And third house and fourth house matters will be much influenced by Saturn. Um, for instance, Gemini, let's see the seventh house. The first house and the seventh house, they're always exactly opposite. Because the first house is where the ecliptic intersects the horizon in the east. Um, here. So the ecliptic is this one. It is intersecting here in, in um, Sagittarius. And if you go to the west, this is there where everything will, goes, will set. So this is the ecliptic. It will um, cut here, if you take out the Earth, um, the ecliptic is this one, and here is the horizon, so here is the cut point, means Gemini is the seventh, it intersects here in Gemini, Moon is in Gemini, so we can see here also that the degrees for the seven and the degrees for the first are exactly same. Twenty-seven degrees and five sec si five minutes. Twenty-seven degrees and five minutes here. The first and the seventh, and they're exactly opposite. Sagittarius, Gemini. And you will see also second and eight will also have exactly the same. They're exactly opposite always. The third and the ninth are exactly opposite. Four degrees and five, four and five. Then 23 and 30, 23 and 30. So, so you'll see this there is exactly opposite each other, these houses. Okay. So that much I wanted to say about the house placements. Now I want to just a little bit play around. Okay, let, let it be for today like this. In another video, I will show you the difference between Using this software, I will show you the difference between sidereal and tropical system. Um, and also, we can talk about how this mechanic of the sky is working, how this is exactly working. We can, it's very nicely, we can understand from this software. Uh, I will put the link in the description. This Stellarium, it's an open source uh, software. It's free on, all, it's available on all the platforms. I'm using it on Linux. Um, yeah, thank you very much for listening. Um, subscribe if you have not. Share the video to all people who are care to know something. And follow my Instagram. I'm not posting daily, but o very often. And more content is to come. Have a wonderful day.